this project? Well, the, I had been involved in this project uh, that it was kind of the same. It was like um, artists submitted pictures that they had made of a city. That project was just solely about the publication. It was just about the book. And they did a book launch and it was all about promoting the book. And I thought it was a missed opportunity because it should have been all about the art, in my opinion. I thought that uh, you could have had an exhibition with it and it, it, it was so simple, it was so obvious, it, it was so easily you know, put together. They, they just worked so well together and I didn't understand why they hadn't done that. And um, the more I thought about it, the more I thought that, you know, maybe I could do something like that and be able to help other artists and it could be more about the art than about the book. Um, my name is Liz Brown. Um, I'm originally from the southeast of England, um, but I've been in North Kerry for the last uh, three and a half years. And um, before that, I lived in Bermuda for 23 years. And that's where I met my truly born husband. My name is Danny Lamb, originally from North Cork, North Magree. Uh, immigrated to Khmer, I suppose, in the uh, middle 80s. Got married and raised a family. So I would have worked in telecommunications uh, for a long time. And I suppose it's only since I retired, I got serious about uh, painting. My name is Tressa Rice, and I'm from Ebidorne, County Kerry. And I really started um, uh, painting around seven years ago. So I'm from England now, and it's in Hampshire where I, I'm living at the moment, but originally from Luton. So. But um, yeah, I have a strong affiliation with Galway as well. We have a farm there, so, oh, so we're back and forth <laughs> for that. Yeah. My name is Olivia and I live here in Killarney and I have been painting for the last 20 years. 20 years ago I saw my first painting, they say, but I've always been interested in art. So my name is Ross Palmer. Uh, I'm based in, in Cork, in, in Glanmire. Um, I sort of took up art as a, as a hobby when I was uh, just about to retire from working. My name is Tatiana Mishina. I am a Ukrainian artist, but now I'm based in Cork City and I'm happy to be here today and to take part in uh, this amazing exhibition about Kerry. After school, I did science rather than art, okay. and I taught science and maths in the schools here in Killarney for 30 years. Okay. And then I was lucky to get an early retirement package 20 years ago exactly, so that I'd have more time to spend painting. And of course, here beside the National Park, I had plans to be roaming <laughs> on my bicycle all day and sketching and so on. I sold my first paintings actually here in this venue. Um, 20 years ago and since then I have recently sold my 900th painting. You know you get this feeling when you are in nature, you get this lovely peaceful feeling and I hope it translates into my paintings. Um, it was a passion of mine since I was very little. I used to like doodling whilst I was at school, everyone was learning their numbers, so I was on the margins doodling away <laughs> as you do and then um, yeah I went, went to college then and then on to university and I um, studied art, art in Wolverhampton there for, for a couple of years and then decided that I might go and earn some money instead. So <laughs> I was packed up at the art and went and uh, learnt plastering. So, yeah, that's, nice. that's, that's And I suppose while you were working, did, like, did you kind of put all of that to one side? I did. I didn't do anything then until lockdown. Did a couple of little bits, but nothing serious till lockdown. And then since then, I've kind of really got back into it. And, the lockdown Enjoying kind of it. brought it back out. It did, yeah. it did, yeah. Now I'm a bit more into it now than I, than I have been. So about a year before I moved, uh, we moved here, um, I started painting. Um, I'd drawn as a child, but I'd never actually 
really painted. So I went off one day and got some paints and um, set up my ironing board on my balcony and started painting on uh, bits of old wood. And uh, then I just, as soon as we moved over to um, Ireland, I found myself a teacher who is actually here at the moment. And uh, another one of the artists, uh, Tressa, um, is one of her students as well, San Sandra Griffin. I would have done it in secondary school for a few years up to leaving cert. And then around the 2000s, I think my wife gave me a, a token or a voucher for a local artist. And I was blessed among women. I was meeting them every once a week, probably. And uh, I was the only man among eight. And I learned, I suppose, quite a lot from that, those particular things. And later then, um, when my kids had grown up, they had a study, so I was able to convert that into a studio. And it's a bit like a Francis Bacon studio at the moment. Uh, you just can't walk in there. I think that's a great thing to have a studio. You, you can actually leave what you're working at. Someday, if you're not getting going well, you can actually leave everything and come back the following day. Whereas if you're going to the kitchen table or something like that, it's not as, as uh, functional. I got seriously into it when my husband died four years ago. And um, I found a great, a great help during the bereavement and then COVID, the pandemic started and it was really a great help because I couldn't even see my grandchildren. They were outside the window waving in at me. Mm. And uh, so I found the painting really helped me a lot. I think, I, you know, I would have sort of got depressed really if, if I didn't have it. I found it great because I was lonely, I was caring for my husband for nearly 40 years really. And I missed him a lot because I was, you know, he's full-time care and I was doing, you know, just 24 hour care. So then when he was gone and the pandemic and I found I didn't look at nature so much. And now when I'm driving in the car, I'm looking at the clouds, I'm looking at the mountains. You, you take so much more in when, you're, when you are painting. And that's, that's what I love as well. You know, you're out in nature more and everything looks beautiful. I sort of took up art as a, as a hobby and uh, I really took to it and joined a number of groups and, and art classes and, and then during the pandemic uh, you couldn't attend art classes so I had a lot of online stuff and, and I found that very interesting because you, you then get into a kind of community, international community, you feel like you know the people and, and you, you get a lot of benefits from that but uh, I suppose what I'm doing is I'm just painting my journey, my, my life's journey. Because I, I think that most people have got a story to tell. And uh, I was going to write a book, so I'm busy painting it instead. How did you hear about the art side? I heard about it online. Um, I think I saw it on either Facebook or Instagram or possibly both. And I thought that it would be a nice thing for some of my students to enter so I said it to some of my students and I helped one of my students enter and that's Trasse. What's the name of the group that you teach? Where, like, where it's, do you teach there? It's the Kalmiley Art Group and I teach in Kalmiley in my studio but I also teach in community centres and I do some schools as well. Like is it any type of art? Is it specific types of art that you like to teach? No. No, I teach beginners to um, all sorts of ages. I've all very diverse ages, um, children, and I teach oils, acrylics. We use all the mediums. I try to use everything, particularly with the children, so that they can experience a little bit of everything. How many were put into this book? How many were in the exhibition? How are they chosen? There were uh, 50 artists that were accepted to the publication with 130 artworks. And there were 42 in the exhibition. Uh, I tried to give everybody a space, to give everybody a chance to give as many. I mean, I would have loved to take all 50, but I just didn't have the display space for them. Uh, so I had space for 42. So uh, rather than give a whole bunch to one person and nothing to another person, I tried to give one space. So all 42 spaces were given to 42 different artists. And then I tried to mix it up 
I mean, it was basically there were six large spaces. So logistically, I had I was able to take six like oversized paintings, and then I could take the rest medium to small. But then when it came down to which piece from which artist, the pieces that I liked, the pieces that I thought would be well received, the pieces that work well with other pieces that have been chosen, um, try to keep variety of styles, variety of subjects, and just make it interesting for viewers as well. And I thought that Kerry had great scenery and great choice and lots of landmarks and things that people recognize and people I mean, when you come to Ireland, Kerry is very often the destination where a lot of people come and a lot of people know about Kerry. And so, yeah, that was the second choice. Talk a bit about the piece that you've got on here. So mine is Ladies' View. It's the it's the one you have on the cover. So it's, uh, that was um, something I tried to make quite atmospheric. It's quite a, quite a monumental part of um, the scenery in, in Kerry. So I tried to um, give it as much atmosphere as I could. So I used uh, cadmium yellows and some phthalo blues. So I really tried to have a good contrast between the lights and the darks and try and give it a good bit of atmosphere. Uh, this is an um, um, image of uh, Dingley Lighthouse. I visited uh, last summer with a company of my friends and uh, it was like an amazing place as well. But I have a series of uh, Irish lighthouses so like I tried to reach every lighthouse that I can and if I can't visit it, just to see it from some distance and to paint it after, after that. I have about uh, seven or eight pieces of lighthouses up to now. Uh, the buildings are very inspiring for me uh, because it's uh, like a um, um, piece of culture, of local history and uh, even something a little bit uh, magical between uh, light and sea, between uh, like uh, people and the ocean, and uh, th th that kind of poetical things. The one here today, I took it, it was actually during lockdown. We got out for a little walk, it was just within the radius, you know, when they changed the distance you could travel. And um, we went down and it was actually, the walk that we intended to do, it was a bit flooded. It was very, the, the water was very high but it was just so nice watching the swans and so on that I took some photos and I did the painting then when I got back from, from, from those photos. So it's called High Water Ross Castle. I love the, the outdoor and Kerry is such a magical place. You know, there's so many beautiful beaches and woods and rivers and lakes and you know, it's just beautiful, the nature. And I love Dingle and the Atlantic Way, and um, I love the Skellig. I've painted the Skellig, my piece, the Skellig Michael. I did a lot of it with the knife, you know. I love texture, and oh, I love from the, you can see the cliffs, that they, you can nearly climb them. And <laughs> I didn't get the 600 steps in now, but <laughs> I tried. And uh, I love the colours of the mountain, and the, the seasons changing, and. I have a few paintings now with autumn colours and the different oranges and yellows and browns. And <laughs> I love all those warm shades. I just really enjoyed painting it. I really did. And um, I'd love to, you know, I'm going to keep at the painting now. When the Artist's Eye uh, invitation came out, I, I had recently been on a holiday in uh, Valencia Island. Some friends of mine have got a, a place there in Knightstown. And obviously there's such a lot of very nice walks and so on. So I took a lot of photos and I was in the middle of doing painting. So I did a lot of artwork for them and gave it to them as, as gifts for staying there. Um, and one of which was, was the, the coffee shop uh, at Knightstown, which um, was selected to be part of the book. 
Uh, and the other one that, that we selected in the book is the um, Valencia Lighthouse. And um, that is a lovely lighthouse. And I managed to just capture the lighting perfectly. And I, 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 th I thought it was a really nice painting. And luckily it, it, it was, I, I have it still. Uh, so I was able to exhibit it here today. So I hope people like it, you know. So uh, my painting in the show today is um, of Blenneville Windmill. It's um, acrylic on uh, canvas paper and, and it's um, been framed up behind um, glass. And it was one of the first paintings that I actually painted when I moved to Ireland. And uh, I used to drive past the windmill all the time and I just thought it was a stunning place. I've also taken lots of photographs of it as well. <laughs> Um, generally, I paint in acrylics and oils. I've tried watercolour, but not been too successful in that. Um, but yeah, I'd like to take my own photographs and paint from my own photographs as well. Um, and I also dabble a little bit in pottery. So, oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> what inspired my painting is for mostly, uh, well, I think the landscape in Ireland is fantastic. We often talk about the pottery mm. shades of green, but I think if you're living here to see your pottery shades of blue and pottery shades of grey, and uh, you have the townscape in Kilmere, and then you have the landscape, and obviously the seascape. I, my particular picture here is the actual suspension bridge, even though it's not the suspension bridge as such, it was a replacement for the suspension bridge. I think the suspension bridge was built in the 1940s, or sorry, the 1840s, and the bridge that's there now, or Ladies Bridge, it uh, was built in the uh, 1930s. But um, one of the things, that, I mean, you can be inspired by anything you read, and I have just a little poem here and I think this paints its own picture and it's one of those ones by uh, Seamus Heaney and I think it's a fan, it's almost he paints a picture with his words and it's called Postscript and he says as follows and some time make the time to drive out west into County Clare along the flaggy shore in September or October when the wind and the light are walking off each other so that the ocean on one side is wild with foam and glitter and inland among stones, the surface of a slay great lake is lit by the arted lightning of a flock of swans. Their feathers roughed and ruffling, white and white, their fully grown heads, strong looking heads, tucked or cresting, are busy under water. Useless to think you'll park or capture it more thoroughly. You are neither here nor there. A hurry too, which known and strange things pass, as big soft buffetings come at the car sideways and catch the heart of guard and blow it open. And I think those two lines there as what captures art in the west of Ireland. It says the light and the, the, the wind and the light are working off each other. Uh, often if you're on a scene and you're about to capture it, a gust of wind will come and the clouds change totally and suddenly you're totally lit with a different lighting and again and the other thing I would say about Kilmere as well, on the cold mornings, if you go down Trap Bridge as well, there's a mist over the mountain and a fog along it, and it's a totally different scene to what you normally see. What's next for the artist's eyes? Um, I would love to be able to do more of these. I hope that the project will grow to a point where it is self-sustaining so that it can provide that for people. Yeah, I'd love to do more exhibitions. I've actually got one painting in um, the museum in Trilly at the moment um, for the Art in the Park group. Uh, uh, it's really the first time that I'd actually ever exhibited any paintings and I'd love to, to carry on and do more. Like, uh, I'm only very uh, grateful to all people who support me and to help me to be here today and just be in Ireland uh, all the year to all my friends and new friends in this country as well. It's been a great opportunity for me. I mean, sometimes I get a little stressed and nervous that, you know, uh, I guess anybody would. Um, is it going to work? Or are people going to show up? But the time that I have spent, I have really enjoyed it. It's a fabulous, fabulous exhibition. And there's some stunning paintings in the book. And well done to Terry for, for helping artists, encouraging artists to show their work. It's great, it's fantastic. And I'm honoured to be in the book that she picked me because I'm only, you know, I'm only starting out and it actually has given me great confidence 
And I'm delighted because I have it now for my grandchildren. I think she could do curry again because there's so many. It hasn't, it's not all in the book yet. We were even saying that uh, on the way over my art teacher, she came with me and uh, we were saying she could bring out another book and carry it. Nearly anything up the west of Ireland is fantastic from Billy Hall, Mayo, you've already done Galway. I mean, if you take Cork, you can see that you've also great churches like Ugon Barra, I'm sure, which I've painted actually, which has been photographed millions of times. So I think actually we'll do a 32 county book. So you have only uh, another 30 to go. I've met so many really nice people that I never would have met otherwise. They're interesting and they're smart and they're talented and they're genuine. It's really nice to be able to, you know, see people connecting over something like that. And, and I enjoyed that. Um, just to be able to be a part of that has been really nice. Not sure, hopefully it will go somewhere positive, you know. <laughs>